Well, today we're going to be using uh, the 400 series Strathmore watercolor, 140 pound cold press paper. And we're going to be using the uh, Crayola watercolor colored pencils. Um, Crayola just happens to be the brand that I have around, and so I'm going to try those out today. Um, you could use any other kind of paper. This is just what I have on hand, so this is what I'm going to use for today's demonstration. Our goal today is to create a close-up of a dragon's eye. So what I've done here is I've already had a quick pencil drawing of what I want to use for my dragon's eye. And notice I didn't fill in every detail. This area, the scales and things here can be filled in later. Um, this is mainly what we want to focus on. So once you have a good reference or a good idea of what you're going to do for patterning in the the area around the eye and the shape of the eye, then you're ready to start adding the color. Some things I like to have nearby as I'm working is my um, hand sharpener. I like my metal one here, found at my local hobby store, art and art supply store. Okay, and then we're going to start with just these three colors here. So we've got violet, blue, and we've got focus in sky blue okay and we're gonna work on the details of the iris the pupil those things first and then I'll work around here and and add in those details the shadows and create some value so that hopefully we get a really awesome looking dragon's eye okay I think I'm gonna start by working on some of the iris the colored portion of the eye and do some of these radiating lines, you know, just that fairly heavy. And the cool thing about these colored pencils what that I've discovered, because I don't use a lot of watercolor pencil, this is something I'm just kind of trying out, but these lines will stay in here. So there's a little more control as far as how your lines and things look when you're finished. I know some of my students do not like painting in watercolor because there's so little control over their, what their paint is doing. It, it frustrates them. Okay, so I'm just putting some lines out here <clears throat> so that it starts to create this iris that's radiating from the pupil in the center. And I left a little bit of white space around here, and that's on purpose. I want that space to be there when I'm done. Okay, and if you don't think it's strong enough, go ahead and darken it up a little bit more. I'm not too concerned at this point about filling every little gap. One thing I am noticing is my pencil smudging a little, but I think we'll be okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I've added that in. I'm also going to take my dark blue. So everybody has different techniques, so you don't have to do it exactly like me. This is just how I'm choosing to do it. But I'm going to put some darker lines, and this is blue. I had to double check because for a minute I thought it was my violet but it's dark blue and I'm adding those in between again leaving some white space in between all those lines I'm trying to make sure I get a good strong line because the weaker the line the less color there is for later since these are watercolor pencils when you add water to them later it's going to change their look only if there's something there to to change. I think I'm going to stretch this out a little further. Get my light blue back in here, my sky blue. Extend those lines out. You decide what looks best for your eye. Okay. I probably should be putting down another sheet of paper because I'm noticing that I am smudging up a lot with this pencil. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got a piece of paper to kind of set there. This is something you can do when you're working and if things are kind of smudging around on you, it's sometimes helpful to have a piece of paper to keep under your hand so that you don't make a big mess out of all of your hard work. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so we've got this part, and then you can go, always go around and start working on the rest of the eye, which is what I think I'm going to do. Oh, 
Okay, so I've got my paper. That way I can put it down where my hand is brushing across the other artwork and that will reduce the smudges and things that we have going on. Alright, so I'm going to take my my darker blue, or my blue I guess I should say, just plain old blue, and I'm going to start coloring around the outside edge of this eye. I'm hoping I can do it without making a big mess, so we'll see. Trying to stay without getting into the outer edges here. And again, I'm going to leave some of the space. And because I'm using this cold pressed paper, it's somewhat textured. So you're going to notice some of that paper texture showing through as you color. It won't be as smooth. So you could always switch to a different type of paper that's smoother. Again, this is what I had on hand. I'm just trying out the, the watercolor pencils. It's not something I'm accustomed to working in. Okay? But I'm working my way around, and I'm actually going to go along the edge of the eyelid <clears throat> and try to darken it along the edge of the eyelid a little bit more, simply because there would be a little more shadow there that would give you that... I feeling that there's an eyelid here that's pushed past the eye. Same thing with the top eyelid. So I make that darker, and I can come back through and darken this again later, so don't overdo it. Because if you go too light, you can always come back and add to it later, but if you go too dark, it's, it's not as easy to repair. Okay, and watch your pencil as you're working, because if you notice that you're starting to hit the wood against the paper, you may want to sharpen that because the wood will start gouging and create nasty looking little marks in your paper. And then when you go to do this later, you're going to have these white lines showing up that you didn't anticipate because it's where the pencil gouged, gouged the paper, created a indentation. Alright, so I'm trying to taper off, so I'm reducing my pressure on the pencil as I work toward the center of the eyelid, or the eyeball. Notice that I'm using the side of my pencil, it gives me more control that way. I mean, if you have a technique that works better for you, that's fine. Alright. I'm trying to gently grade it have a nice gentle gradient from the center, or toward the center. Darker toward the edges, a little bit lighter toward the center. Okay, so we're starting to get some interesting look to our, our eyeball. But again, I'm looking here and it still looks too flat. These areas are looking like they're coming, they're popping out more because I darkened along that edge. So I would go along and darken that edge some more. And if you need to, this is where I'm going to use it more like I would normally hold a pencil. Remember, we're going to be using water later. We'll see how well this blends out using water. Let me move my paper a little bit so that I'm not smudging everything. And it's always a good idea to kind of step back from your work every so often and just take a look at it from further away so you can kind of give yourself a different idea of what what's going on with your paper as you're working on it. Because sometimes when we're so close to it and we're so focused on one area for so long, we might miss something that we need to fix. And by taking a look at it from further away or a different angle, it helps us to catch that and do a nicer job. All right, I think we're getting close to what I'm looking for. All right, so I've darkened that up and you can kind of see, perhaps, that it's starting to recess or sink the eyeball back in and bring the eyelids back out. Um, I like to add a little bit of purple in there, so let me switch 
colored pencils. I'm going to get my violet or purple, whichever you prefer to call it. And I'm going to use that along these edges as well. Now you can see that line will even darker. <clears throat> we don't always need, because a lot of times we think, oh, we need to get the, the black colored pencil out or the black paint or whatever to make our shadows, but shadows aren't always that deep. So we can look at the other colors that might be present in that area. And this time I think my violet is going to be helpful. Okay, so let me cover that. Putting that along there and keep coloring. So those of you who really like colored pencils, because they give you a control, hopefully you'll enjoy watercolor pencils. Because again, you can leave it just like a regular colored pencil, but that kind of defeats the purpose, since they tend to cost a little more than a regular, a traditional colored pencil. All right, there we go. I've got that worked in. We're going to see how that comes out later. I'm actually going to go in and work on the pupil while I'm here thinking about it. So I'm going to switch and find my black watercolor pencil. And again, this is where it's important to keep your hands dry too. So when you washed your hands or anything in between, when you got it all, if you happen to be smudged up like I got, you want to make sure they're dry because, again, you're working with watercolor pencil. Water will change the look. Okay, so I'm getting the outline. Somewhere in here I want to leave a reflection on the eye. So I think I'm going to leave a spot right here of white. And then the, I'm going to fill this, the rest of this in really dark. Now remember, watch as you're coloring. If you notice that it's starting to get down to the wood and it might dig into your paper to stop and and sharpen that. So far I seem to be doing okay. Okay, and again, don't worry if you have, like, like I said, on the texture showing through, because what we're going to end up with in the end here, when I start blending this using the water on a brush, we're going to smooth out some of this and it should fill in a lot of these holes. That is my hope. I'm not, like I said, this is new. I'm not accustomed to using Crayola watercolored pencils. But we're gonna see how that comes out. Okay, so I think I kind of got what I want going on in the eye for now anyway. We can always come back and do some touch-ups. I think I'm gonna go back to my light blue and work on some of these areas that are in white around the eye, the skin that overlaps. <coughs> so, we're going to see if we can make this look awesome. Alright, let me slide this back up here since I know my pencil's very smudgy. I'm just going to put some light blue in here. Like I said, I like to start lighter because then I know I can come back later and darken things if need be. And I know I'm going to want to darken some areas around this. So let me fill in each space. I'm going to want to darken these. I'm probably using the black in the areas that are in gray pencil right now. But I haven't decided whether I want to do that before I get it wet or after. You have to be careful because the water will carry the color around and if you've got something that you don't want to blend and you've already put it on the wet space and it's pulling together, it might not be what you want. I may take the risk and just see what happens. Because right now, as you see I'm adding this, it actually seems to make the eye and the eyelid look like they're not very far apart from each other. And that's one of the things you have to keep refining as you add more color, you're adding... just got to go back and... 
touch things up. So it's going to keep changing as you go. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try the black. I'm just going to see what happens. Because I can try to control where the water goes in. All right. So this area around it, because it's really, I want to see how it's going to look. I think I'll even start right here next to the eye. This is a deep, shadowy area. I'm trying to get this shape to show up. And I may even end up going in here and darkening that as well. Again, I experimented with this, um, these colored pencils on another type of paper, and I did notice that this, like I said before, all these little lines that are showing up from the texture of the paper, it did seem to fill in fairly well, especially the black filled in a lot better than I had expected, so I'm still thinking this is going to look a lot deeper and a lot less textury when we're done. I mean, we want some texture. kind of adds to the, the look and feel of our dragon. But I also want some deeper color. And this did seem to do that when I was experimenting. I always like to take... It's nice to keep a scrap of paper, especially whatever paper you're working on, if you get the same type, keep it nearby as a practice, just to experiment. Try something off to the side rather than just everything right on your original paper because you don't want to mess up all that hard work you've gotten this far and all of a sudden, oh, I think I'm going to try this and oh, something bad happens. So I keep that nearby and that's I experiment with some techniques and see what I like best. I do that with a lot of projects that I'm working on, keep a test do a test patch somewhere so you can make the best decision before you put it into your final art piece. So here I am still adding color. I'm still not totally excited about this. Like I said, we have to keep building up color. So many times I see people, especially my students, who they'll just color it one level of color. Just, I've got light blue and I'm done. I've got dark blue and I'm done. They don't blend anything. And When you take time to blend your colors, build up values, light and dark areas, it really really makes a difference. Okay? I'm not convinced that this is finished by any means, just because I colored there. And not just because I'm going to come back later and, and check on my other stuff. I think I'm going to sharpen my pencil. You know, check on it and add water to blend it out more. There we go. Got a little more pencil to work with because I'm getting kind of close to the wood. Okay. Now I know this area I'm going to darken in. It's going to have some deeper shadows. So I'm going to go ahead and use some black in this in that space. That's where I had some pencil already in there, knowing that I'm going to black it up. And I can overlap with a little bit of blue in there too, so that when they blend, it's not just solid black in that space. And I'm going to go along this edge where the eyelid and these scales tend to meet and strengthen that line. Look at that. As I strengthen that line, give it more value, more boldness, the eye starts to drop back behind the eyelid again. Not literally, but it appears to, so it creates that illusion. Okay. Now the trick will be when I add my water later to make sure I don't mess up. Alright, so I'm going to keep working with my color. I may go back here and take some, actually I think I will right now, take some of my dark blue. And on this edge of each of these shapes, I'm just going to color a little bit of dark blue. Not the whole thing, just on this edge. And I'm hoping that it's showing up well enough on the camera so that you can see how it starts to affect the overall 
look of our dragon's eye, a close-up of the dragon's eye. And as I get here, there's obviously not going to be as much to touch up. <clears throat> when I add the water, this should blend quite well. And again, you have to be very careful about how much water you're using. You don't want big globs of water on your brush dripping everywhere. Sometimes, that's why I like to keep paper towel nearby when I'm ready for that. So make sure when you get ready to start blending your color using water, have some paper towel handy so that you can blot your brush and not get, get everything all drippy and runny, unless that's a look you're going for. If you wanted to have that runny wet paint look, I suppose that could be a technique you'd try. But in this case, I do not. So <clears throat> I would blot it out to make sure I don't get too much water because I don't want it dripping off the brush. I want the brush wet but not dripping. spot all together. Okay, so we're starting to create that edge. And like I said, I could put some blue in here, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, because I know this is a really dark, shadowy area that I'm creating here. So I'm mixing the blue over the black so that it's giving it some consistency as to where it's coming from, and it will blend in better, not to be so obvious that I've changed colors. All right, so I'm going to continue working on this. Again, building up color as we go. And then we'll come back and we'll try out how the water itself actually affects the watercolor pencil. So I'm going to go continue and you, as you work on your own. All right, so as I go along I, on these little spikes that stick out from the eye, again, this pencil tells me I want some really dark shadows because these are actually popping out. They're not flat by any means. So I'm actually going to darken that and create... So I'm going to do my shadows first. Okay. This paper sounds so funny with the texture. Still keeping my other paper underneath my hand so I don't mess everything up. So I'm just going over my pencil lines with this watercolor pencil. And I'm going to have good strong shadows when I'm done. Okay. And this one I noticed when I drew it that I didn't curve as much so I'll just add a little curve as I color it now. Our artwork is a kind of a living thing. It keeps changing until we finally say, we're done. Alright, here's another spot. Okay. And I'm going to thicken or darken the color along here too because there's a difference in where these things are. There should be some deeper shadows. And the more you do that, the more interesting your drawing becomes. The more believable it becomes. Okay. Now, technically there are some shadows along this, and I may come back and do those in a minute. I'm deciding. So as you're working on art, you'll find that you're making decisions the whole time. I said it's a great, it's a great practice for you. Work on art. If you need to work on decision making, whew, lots of decisions when you're doing art. Okay, so I'm going to color along this edge. It needs to be darker along the bottom edge. So. So we're creating that texture, giving those shadows their home. Now, um, again, we're going to do the same types of colors out here. can add purple in there. Um, 
there will actually be shadows here. One of the things I think I'm going to do real quick, just so that you can get an idea of how the watercolor works now that I've put some of this together, is I'm going to get a brush and some water and just demonstrate and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I went and got a small container of water and I've got my paper towel here nearby and I got myself a small round, actually I think this is number six round, whatever you have handy that you're comfortable with working in or working with. And we're going to put some water on here just so you can see how the watercolor pencil reacts once you add water to it. So, let me get some water on my brush. I'll dab it off, make sure I don't have too much, and I dip it a few times just to get the brush ready since it hasn't been used yet. And try not to have any on the ferrule. That's the metal part here. Because otherwise you'll have this drop that comes running down the brush later and irritate you. Alright, so as I start to work, and I like to work from the edge out toward the middle of the eyeball, and then you're going to have to get some more water. But you can see how it's starting to pull those colors out. And this paper is very different from the one that I was experimenting with earlier. I don't have that one here, but the last time I experimented with the watercolor pencils, I was using just a regular white sulfite paper, great for drawing. Um, it's a good multimedia paper, however, it tends to curl a lot and it absorbs a lot of the water. So I'm working back and forth, kind of, because I'm trying to avoid big changes in color. <clears throat> trying to keep it somewhat consistent. But notice how the lines that I drew are still there. But I can also take my brush and fill in some spaces, because remember I said I wanted to leave some lighter areas kind of rough around there. And that's still there, so that looks good. And you can see the colors blending pretty well. So it gives you a very different look. And like I said, this is great for those people who have to have more control over where their color goes and watercolor it by itself is frust they find frustrating. So this might be an answer to you. Okay, so just kind of go through there and keep blending. And I'm trying to get this edge too while I'm at it. <clears throat> So, but the light blue and the dark blues are still showing and creating a nice look there. All right, I'm gonna pull some of this back toward the pupil. Again, I'm leaving some of the marks. I want it kind of rough looking around there. Right, and I've been wetting my brush periodically because it does start to. When you notice the color is not traveling like you want, you probably need to get some more water on the brush. Now, don't over wet your paper, and sometimes my students tend to work the paper to death. Like they'll just scrub their brush in there. I so said that's you know, I'm doing a very gentle touch to the paper. I am not scrubbing, I'm not destroying the bristles of my brush. It's a very gentle process, okay? And then I can go around this edge and get that, that dark purple and dark blue where we made it thicker. And I can get that wet going in this motion, creating that deep, deep shadow. I mean, look how deep that purple and blue became when I got that wet. That is awesome. Okay, and then if you want to blend it out a little bit as you come out here so you don't have that harsh line that I created when I changed direction of my brush. But I want the dark line around the edge, but not way out here. Okay, so you can see the differences already between dry color pencil and after I take the watercolor pencil and use just a wet brush, how much difference there is. I and mean, woo, look at that. It's like magic. It's beautiful. Okay, it's really making that eye set right there behind that skin, it looks great. Now I, I talked about the pupil and how all this texture of the paper was showing, so I'll demonstrate that real quick just to show you how quickly 
And again, I'm doing very light strokes, just touching with the tip of my brush. Because sometimes we think we have to, at least my students think, that they have to smoosh their brush across the paper and use the whole side of it. But I'm just touching with the tip, and notice how much this black paint has changed in all those little crevices that were there in the paper before have disappeared. Okay, and you got to try to be careful. I'm looking for that spot right here where I wanted that to shine. I'm going to work around it because that's going to be my reflected light. Look at that. Whew. Nice stuff. Alright, and then of course you can go back and touch it up. This is why it's good to take care of your brushes, because if you don't take care of your brushes and you've got this beat up old thing because you've been you know, scraping the paper and grinding it in, it's not going to give you the control you need and you're going to have to compensate for it or find a better brush. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, I'm not going to finish the painting all in this video. I will show you the end results. But as you can see, this is how it begins to change. And I'm going to continue working on this as soon as this dries. I'll go in and start filling in color in all of these other areas around the eye. And then I'll come back and show you what the finished project looks like. Okay, so I just wanted to show you real quick because I hadn't mentioned it much, but when you're working on those lines, I didn't get right up into that dark area with the black, but I just did that with my brush. I finished this side as you can see. But I was touching just the tip of my brush and following into that black pencil line that I created there with the colored watercolor pencil earlier. And I'm just following the edge very carefully. And as I do that, that deep color next to the purple really makes that part pop forward and emphasizes the shadow along here. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. And let me see. So I can show you how I'm really going in carefully from the edge. And then eventually I will continue. So as you're working, pay attention to those edges. Try not to get too much water in there. It's a good idea to let one area dry before you start working next to it. If there's something that you don't want to to blend together too quickly or to run together, because the water will like to meet up with other areas that are wet. And if you allow it to dry, then when you're working in there, it tends to stay in the area that you're working in. It doesn't usually run to the dryers unless you have too much water. All right, so back to your paintings. Now, the other thing I'm noticing is I'm probably going to have to be very careful as I go through and do the dark areas around the areas that are blue. So what I'll probably do is just work on those dark areas and let them dry and then come back and work on the blue so that there's less blending of the black into this blue area. I mean, I might want some blending, but I'm afraid it might blend too much. So I'm going to do just that area first. Let's see if we can... We'll see how well I've filled it in, because I know I was going kind of fast in this area. 
you got to watch carefully because it might be hard to tell where the blue and the black are ending depending on how dark and because of the texture of the paper. As you can see, it's already making a difference. So you're going to continue along this whole stretch. Or, you know, I'm going to continue along this whole stretch. Your dragon eye might be different than mine. So, But again, it's just paying attention to where do I want that color. And if I want lighter stuff around it, I probably should wait you know, and work that area after this part dries. Doesn't mean that when I add water, if I pull in from the black a little bit, it could still flow into the blue, but not as likely as if it's wet 